All right, y'all ready to watch me turn into a truck or what? Hi y'all, Snarky J Cosplay here. So on Instagram, I've gotten a lot of questions about how exactly I built this, my Optimus Prime cosplay. And so I thought what better way to answer all those questions and talk a little bit about this build than to make a YouTube video featuring all the progress pictures I took while I built it. So with that being said, let's get started on how I built my Optimus Prime. So to kick things off, I wanna talk about the concept that I developed for for this build. I'm 5'3 and built pretty curvy, so it's kind of hard for me to figure out how exactly to make these robotic parts work. But basically, I came to the conclusion that I wanted to create a female version of Optimus Prime's appearance in the 2018 Bumblebee movie. I really like that build. So from that point, I actually developed my own original concept. This is the sketch. As you can see, I actually went in and kind of labeled every single part, made myself a shopping list. And from that point on, I got to work. So starting at the very top, I knew that I wanted to have a very clean, very well built helmet. I wanted to have one 3D printed, but unfortunately I couldn't find the exact file that I wanted. In searching for one inspired by the Bumblebee film, I came across this guy. This is the Killer Body 2018 Optimus Prime helmet. So as far as the helmet is concerned, the only thing that I really did to it was pad the inside. As you can see, there's a couple of cushiony parts right here and up here. Um, that's actually just an airsoft helmet kit that you can get on Amazon. And I went ahead and installed that in the bucket with hot glue so it would fit my little noggin a little better. So since I already had my original concept developed and it was based around that look, around that specific helmet, I went to work trying to figure out how exactly to build all of this from EVA foam. I'm the kind of builder that always wonders, am I really gonna reinvent the wheel here? If I can find a pattern to work off of and make my life a lot easier, I will. So in digging around on Etsy, I found this seller. He's called Prime Props and he makes some fantastic patterns. So with these bases in mind, I got to work. One of the problems I immediately ran into is that the patterns were the the wrong size. Surprisingly enough, aside from the fact that I make YouTube videos, I actually am terrible with technology. But I did manage to take the patterns into Adobe Acrobat and I resized them. I sized them down basically about 5% to better fit my frame. Once the patterns were resized, I printed them out, put them together, and I started tracing. One of the things that I want to specify here is that I traced every pattern piece out onto four millimeter EVA foam. This is high density EVA foam. It's not the floor mats that a lot of people build stuff out of. It's a lot better quality. It's easier to work with. And because it was four millimeters, it fit my body and this build a whole lot better. This specific foam is from the Foamery. If you're interested in that foam, I've actually got links to everything I used for this build in the description below. You can check that out at my Amazon storefront. As you can see in this picture, I pinned every single pattern piece to the foam. And what that does for me is basically I didn't have to hold every single piece down and since these pieces had to fit really specifically I didn't want any margin of error so by pinning all the pattern pieces to the foam I kind of saved myself that stress as you can see the build started coming together pretty quickly I actually built the entire base of Optimus's chest in one evening so once that was built I had to figure out exactly what details I wanted to do Optimus Prime is a very multi-layer thing so if you ask me when designing a transformer over complicating things is key and so so right here, I started sketching out different things that I thought would look cool. What I started to do was cut all the little detail pieces that I wanted out of thin foam and thin dowels and start working them into the design. You're gonna see in these pictures that there's all these little white dots. Those are actually googly eyes and googly eyes make great rivets. Now I will say that pieces of this armor now sound like a baby rattle, but it was 100% worth it because it saved me from cutting circles and the rivets look phenomenal if you ask me. At this point, the basis of the chest was almost completely built and I added in windows. I basically just cut out plastic from a binder divider that happened to be a navy blue that when I laid it over the black foam actually had a pretty cool look to it and reminded me of the windows you would see in a cell shaded video game so I was pretty happy with the look. 
So after my big beautiful chest piece was completed, it was time to move on to the shoulders. Now I didn't really get a whole lot of pictures of the shoulders on account of the fact that it was just a basic build. I used really thick EVA foam dowels and some thinner ones and what I did was I basically cut an angle and sanded it down that way I could attach it to the shoulder. At this point I also built the base forearms. I actually ended up adding a whole lot of detail to the forearms that I really didn't get pictures of. These are some of the details on the forearms. I actually included the little arrow that he's always had on his armor. I've got these pipes that actually wrap around at the back. I kind of just did whatever. Just inspired by his build in Bumblebee, but just kind of adding different pieces and I really had a lot of fun doing that. Right here, as you can see, the shoulders were completed, the base forearms were also done, and the chest was also assembled, and I was testing to see how it fit, and it was starting to look pretty freaking cool. After I built the shoulders, I decided, you know what, let's just move on, let's finish the entire arm, and I started to make the hands. Of all the annoying and tedious things I've ever done for cosplay, of which there are many, this was definitely one of the fucking worst I've ever had to do. It was three tiny pieces for each finger. I have 10 fingers on each hand and two palms. So it was literally piece after piece. They all had to be dremeled. They all had to be glued together. I burnt my hands. I don't know how many times. It was miserable. I did not see the time that this would ever end. I actually made the hands into singular units by using leather cord to actually glue every finger piece together. So while they are kind of of a nightmare to get on, it means that I'm way less likely to lose any pieces because if I lose a piece, I'm losing an entire hand and then we've got problems. If anybody needs a hand, I've got extra. <laughs> I need help. Once the hands were assembled, I went on and created the base for the shoe. Now, basically, I used a cheap boot that then got encased in EVA foam. I'd eventually go on to cut layers and layers of smaller bits of foam to go ahead and detail that in the same way I did pretty much every other piece of this build. After building the basic boot, I decided to go on and build the groin slash belt piece. And yes, I built it very much inspired by Boba Fett's armor. It was just the easier way that I knew how to do this. In this picture, it's actually missing the extra butt panel, so you can actually see the extra piece in this finished photo. I built two of these thighs very quickly the next day. In this photo, I went ahead and tried on pretty much all I had of the bottom. I'm frowning pretty hard in that picture because the day before, I actually lost um, one of my best friends in the world. Uh, my cat, who I raised, was born at my house, was literally my baby for 12 years, um, passed away, and it was honestly basically my driving force in continuing this build. Um, I'm the kind of person that likes to throw myself into my work to try and distract myself, and I actually included a little tribute to her that I'm gonna go ahead and talk about later. On the same day that I built the thighs, I went ahead and I built spine and ab plates. So what I did was I cannibalized an old corset. I went ahead and installed some Velcro. These pieces are on there permanently because they don't really need to be attached or removed. But this piece and the back, they actually come off. So this is the back part and on the front I would attach this and it would basically come together to form my stomach and back. And right here, despite what my face tells you, I started to get really excited about the progress because now I was seeing how cool the silhouette looked, how big the shoulders looked, and the fact that my hips didn't look absolutely massive in it. I was starting to really see Optimus Prime come out of this and I was so, so excited about where it was going. Up next, I got to work on the legs. As you can see, there were a ton of pieces in the knees alone. But once I put those together, I built the entire base of the leg, which wasn't entirely difficult, thankfully. I went ahead and cut up a bunch of dowels that I added, as you can see in this photo. And these basically came to form different pieces of Optimus's leg. I thought maybe he would have some kind of hydraulics there. This is the part where you guys start thinking that I should probably be institutionalized because instead of like, buying toy tires anywhere. No, I decided to cut four pieces of four millimeter foam and then just start adding shit on until it looked like a tire. So I sat there and basically replicated the tread 
over and over and over, cut it out and glued every single strip onto each tire individually. And that got done four separate times, which is why I refuse to have anybody take any pictures of this cosplay where you don't see the legs. In this picture, I laid out every single piece of this cosplay that I had built and I was starting to feel very impressed with myself. Except that when I tried it all on together, I thought it was missing something and then I realized it was missing a neck piece, which to be honest, only took me like an hour and a half to two hours and it turned out pretty well for how quickly I did it. Once the neck piece was built, it was time for me to go to work Plasti Dipping. Plasti Dip has been one of my worst enemies for years because I am woefully impatient. The key to Plasti Dip is thin coats, about four or five of them. So I used up not one, not two, but four entire cans of Plasti Dip to Plasti Dip this entire cosplay. And they ended up super smooth. And that is basically the key to this metallic finish that I got. Speaking of that metallic finish, once everything was plasti dipped and before attachments, it was time to paint. Unfortunately for me, every metallic red I found was too festive and under the light basically bordered on pink. So what I did was I took a metallic red so I would have that sheen and I mixed it with a high gloss cheap red acrylic. And once I had that mixed up, I started applying it to the armor. I started off with the chest piece and was very quickly really pissed off because it was taking me literally Literally six coats of red paint to get that tone. And by the time I was only halfway done with the chest piece, I had decided I never wanted to look at another red paintbrush again, so I went on to the legs. Here you can see the base colors fully applied. The blue is Deco Art Deep Sapphire. I had to go to basically three different craft stores until I hit up a Hobby Lobby as my last resort and found the exact color I wanted. But once the base colors were down, I went ahead and weathered them. I dry brushed on black paint wherever I thought dirt might collect. I hit different areas where I thought paint might chip off with a little bit of bright silver. And then I even went ahead and weathered the tires because I thought Optimus Prime does not know where a car wash is and he doesn't know what armor all is. So I actually mixed my own muddy brown to kind of weather in between the tire tread. Once I had finished the legs, I got undivorced from the chest piece and I went ahead and painted that, the shoulders, and the ab and back pieces. In this picture, you can tell by my manic smile that it was already 1.30 in the morning and I had been painting for eight hours straight that day. Besides ruining my nails, I thought the paint job looked absolutely phenomenal and it was at this point, seeing the shoulders and the chest together, that I I started to see Optimus come out of the woodwork, or foam work, so to speak. I basically did everything that was supposed to be blue in one day because I hate wasting paint. I thought I was gonna be spared from the red nightmare for the rest of this build, but then I forgot I had to do forearms. So once the blue parts were all painted, I hit the black forearms with six layers of red paint, and eventually I was able to call it a day. I don't have any pictures of the weathering process for these because by the time it came around to weathering them, I had literally been pulling 11 to 12 hour days for like three weeks straight and I didn't have it in me to take any more pictures. But by the time I was done weathering everything, I laid it all out together and I just, I almost cried looking at it because I mean, look at this. It's on my living room floor and it still looks impressive. I couldn't believe that I had actually built all of that. So remember that tribute I said I wanted to make to my little baby earlier in the video? My cat's name was Boo Boo, and what I decided to do was turn her name into a number. So being that B is the second letter of the alphabet and O is the 15th, her name written out in numbers would be 21515, 21515. And so I decided to put that number as shown in this picture on my left shoulder. I always carried Boo Boo facing left and she would always tuck her head sort of on my shoulder under my chin and let me give her kisses. And so I wanted her to be part of the build in the spot where she liked to cuddle the most. And so that was my way of commemorating my little princess into this build. So once that was done, it was time to figure out attachments. And I actually want to show you guys a little bit of how I did that, despite the fact that I didn't get any pictures of it. So the neck piece is actually permanently attached by elastic to the chest piece. As you can see, it does not come off. The neck piece, however, does open with Velcro. So does the chest piece. Thank you. 
It opens up from the bottom on both sides and that is how I slip into it. Now to attach the arms, what I did was I added a tab of Velcro right here and another piece of Velcro on the inside of this arm. So when I wanna put it together, I simply press those into one another and now I've got the arm hanging off of the torso. From then on, these tabs then connect to the forearms. As you can see, the fact that I used Velcro and elastic still allows for the arms to bend so I'm not stuck in one position. And in turn, the hand then Velcros into the inside of the arm. This looks really creepy, but that is basically how this all works. The legs work fairly similarly. We've got the groin piece and the butt plate, and on the sides, we've got more Velcro and elastic. So thanks to my very Latin build, once this is on, it doesn't move anywhere, even if you're yanking on it because it gets stuck on my hips. So what I've done here is, once I have the belt on, I then tuck this Velcro to meet the Velcro on the inside of the thigh. This hangs off like so. And the Velcro tabs that hang from the inside of the thigh connect to the inside of the leg, which means that I can fully stretch and bend my leg and none of this actually makes any real contact once I've got it on. The calf then just sort of hangs off of the thigh and rests on top of the shoe, which isn't attached to anything else. All of this slides on and Velcros to itself. None of it goes attached to the undersuit, which is just a silver plain undersuit and I actually really like the look of the bright silver contrasting with all the different pieces. Being that I can't really get my camera to focus on things the way I want them to, here's some detail shots of the tires so you guys can see a little bit of that weathering up close. Nice shot of the thighs going into the upper leg showing a little bit of those tires again and those shoes. Here's a focus shot on those pipes. As you can see I actually weathered it so it looked like maybe some black stuff would be dripping out and right here we've got some shots of that finished build. I started this build on December 23rd, 2022. I finished it January 28th, 2023. So it took a month and just a couple of days to finish this entire build. It's actually the quickest I've ever completed anything this complicated, but I did it. <laughs> I did it all by myself. I built the whole thing. I've been building since 2017. I'm a builder first, a nerd first, and a cosplayer second, so I couldn't be more proud of my finished Optimus Prime. If you are interested in doing this build or something like it, I have linked in the description below every single thing that I used for this build. You can also find a list of different tools that I use to craft any and all of my cosplays. And if you have any questions about this build or any other builds, please let me know. I love talking shop. And that's all from me. I've been Snarky J. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts on my finished Optimus Prime cosplay in the comments below. <laughs> You're so cute. Wow. This is adorable.